Most people love when they see something that's refreshing or new, and it can even change a person's hobbies if it interests them enough. Today we'll be talking about many different things around the world that you probably haven't heard about or seen. We hope that we'll surprise you as we'll have everything from a human slingshot to a balloon World Cup. You can see all this and more on the 15 cool things that you'll see for the first time. Flash floods. Just six inches of rapidly moving flood water can sweep someone off their feet, and with this visualization, you can see that they can be extremely dangerous. They don't call them flash floods for nothing. In 2021, panicked subway riders in the Chinese city of Xingzhou pleaded for help as floodwaters filled up their subway cars, trapping them inside. Many commuters were swamped up to their necks as they sent texts and cell phone videos out quickly. Soaking up water is one of the many services provided by soil. Rainwater that doesn't get absorbed into the ground and instead flows over it is called runoff. Let's say your hometown gets a sudden downpour. If the soil is already oversaturated with water when the rain starts falling, it won't be able to soak up much more of any liquid. This can cause an awful lot of runoff, and that greatly increases the odds of a flash flood breaking out. In this new immersive mixed reality, they place people in the middle of the action and show the immense problems of this natural disaster. Storm chasers must be very brave to get so close to the real thing. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Glove Pipes In this world by Charlie video, Charlie Engelman begins with smooth jazz saxophonist Kenny G in his Guinness Book of World Records setting ability to play really long notes and ends with a homemade musical instrument that's latex glove bagpipes. How are those things related? Kenny G uses a circular breathing technique that allows him to take in air through his nose while still playing a saxophone. He can keep that note going for a very long time. Not only for a few minutes, but a 1997 record setting 45 minutes and 47 seconds. Potentially finicky yet surprisingly effective, this homemade bagpipe craft project can also keep making sounds while you stop to take a breath. To make your own latex glove bagpipes, gather two latex gloves, two straws, strong tape, and a pair of sharp scissors. This makes you wonder why there aren't many new instruments being made these days. What's your favorite instrument? What instrument is the coolest? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> now that's metal. If you like metal music and robots, these could be some of your favorite bands. In 2013, the Japanese robot band Z Machines and the German compressor head robot band began performing in front of live audiences. This all robotic metal band, wherein the mechanical musicians actually play instruments, including an electric guitar, a bass guitar, and drums. Compressor Head, as the band is known, made its debut back in 2013 and has even released a full album. The band's original lineup, which included robots named Stick Boy, Junior, Fingers, and Bones, was built between 2007 and 2012. In 2013, the band's creator, Frank Barnes, approached Canadian punk musician John Wright for a collaboration. Since then, Wright has become the musical director of the group and helped them release two unique songs so far. The whole thing has a hardcore robotic children's band vibe, which is cool, but also leaves us hoping this doesn't turn into a punk version of the famous game Five Nights at Freddy's. These robots give the metal a new name. Are we looking at a complete robotic takeover of the music world? What's your favorite metal band? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> table surfing. After professional skimboarder Austin Keen bought a coffee table at Goodwill for $9, he flipped it upside down and wake surfed on it. Lots of people wanted to buy the coffee table from him soon after. He decided to auction it off and donate all proceeds to Water Walkers, a nonprofit that brings hope to inner city children through education and water sports. He wants to be able to give back. He had no idea that his video would get the attention that it did, so to use it as an opportunity to team up with his sponsor One Wake and turn it into a donation meant something special to him. One Wake has generously offered to take care of shipping and match the bid up to $500. Even though he was a little overwhelmed by the amount of attention the post was getting, 
Water Walkers describes themselves as a youth mentorship program based in Nashville, Tennessee, serving at-risk kids aged 6 to 18. The program aims to build confidence and community among kids who have had a limited exposure to the world beyond the boundaries of governmental housing. By bringing kids outside these limitations and into the beauty of the world, they hope to open a sense of wonder and inspiration in the kids' lives. Who knew so many good things would come from a coffee table? <laughs> Pothole art. Chicago artist Jim Bacher has come up with a novel solution for repairing some of the city's 600,000 potholes. He fills them with beautiful floral mosaics. They're inspired by those found in the streets of Italy. These pothole mosaics have a couple of main purposes. Not only do they bring some great sights to the streets of Chicago, but they also highlight a real issue so that hopefully the people in charge will take notice and start putting more effort into improving the city's roads. Either way, they look amazing. In any case, the power of the red traffic cones with which he secures his construction site is reliable. The cars drive around and let him fill the asphalt. He discovered his interest in mosaics as an intern at an excavation in ancient Pompeii. What captivated him was that the little stones had survived for 2,000 years and that through many of the everyday situations of the time. Perhaps the loss of one work only inspires him to create more. He's filled nearly 90 potholes with his work, one tiny piece of marble and glass at a time. But the streets are quieter now than they used to be and are empty of laughter. His toilet paper mosaic became so popular that he's now put in on iPhone cases and made puzzles, even fine prints. This is a very creative way to have fun at work. <laughs> Human Slingshot Sveen Torp made a video documenting the design and construction of a massive human slingshot that looks like he's set up solely for the sake of a backyard party. We have to respect this work of art. With a proven track record after designing and using a water slide with a 360 degree loop, these Norwegians were completely undeterred. After designing and workshopping the giant mechanism, Sveen and his colleagues took it to a lake for testing. They launched a bag of rocks into the water first. The only thing left to do was strap a human into the machine. Finally, they were ready for the first human test. After a few suspenseful moments, they pulled the lever and took flight. They tested the slingshot a few more times, finding that they were getting roughly 30 meters of flight each trail. The next step was to set it up in the backyard, build a pool approximately 30 meters in front of the machine, and invite 100 of their closest friends to a party. Luckily, it doesn't look like there were any issues with crashes. One has to wonder how much weight factors into things. The pool they're aiming for is a small target. The difference of a few pounds could mean a big difference in terms of flight distance. We don't recommend trying to build one of these at home, as even this one doesn't seem very safe. Golden Bugs Sadly, these bugs are not worth as much as real gold. The golden tortoise beetle is a type of golden beetle that belongs to the family of the leaf beetle. This type of beetle is different and unique from other beetle species as they have a transparent shell cover on their body and inside that's a golden colored beetle. After butterflies, golden beetles are believed to be the second most attractive type of insect as their color and their transparent shell create a special look. This beetle grabs the attention of many people across the world. They're found in different colors during their mating period, development period, and also when a human touches them. Scientific research proves that they change color due to the hydration or dehydration of the insect. The beetle is sparkling, part golden, and part transparent because it's a defensive mechanism for the bug and covers its body so that it has a protection against predators. The wings are also shielded underneath this hard shell. Another way in which they defend themselves is to remain hidden, but that's a challenge because of their sparkly appearance, but you'll likely find them on the backside of a plant so that they stay concealed. This special beetle can be found in Southeastern Asia, China, Myanmar, Thailand, and Cambodia and are just some of the places you might be lucky enough to spot its gold reflection against a green leaf. <laughs> Incredible Billboard As pedestrians get out and about once again in the world's major cities, out-of-home advertising and experiences seem to be having something of a resurgence, with streaming platforms taking over like Netflix, for example, getting people's attention. 
with pushes of Squid Games, Stranger Things, and amongst many others, now a billboard campaign from Amazon Prime Video for the new series Wheel of Time looks certain to grab many looks. While outdoor advertisers have been increasingly experimenting with these sorts of anamorphic 3D effects, Amazon claims this is the first time such a unique billboard has been created in service of an entertainment series. Each of the six billboard sites contains a customized scene shot to fit the specifications of each of the ad spaces. Amplify worked with Prime Video's production team to film footage for the Activisions using green screens, CGI, and visual effects to create the desired effect. The team built models of each of the billboard screens, then storyboarded with the showrunner to position the actor in such a way that would maximize the 3D effect. The exact focal length, angle, and height of each of our six global sites were matched during the live-action shoot which ensured exact alignment when they composited the live-action footage into the scenes. Technology like augmented reality and 3D effects to immerse fans in the action of a series have become increasingly popular with studios looking to make a splash in the real world. Would seeing a cool billboard make you go see a movie? <laughs> Magic Carpet Ride A real-life Aladdin, well kind of, has been spotted around Dubai recently and we know now why he was there. Aladdin was actually a YouTuber who zoomed around Dubai on his so-called magic carpet. From the souks to the sea, he truly delivered as Aladdin. And just how did he make his magic carpet really fly? A clip of him, dressed in a costume that mimics the famous character, is seen flying in the streets of Dubai on his magic carpet, which sparked the curiosity of many as to what was going on. He's seen riding on the carpet, which aroused everyone's astonishment. In fact, the young man, later found out to be Mark Dayton, known as Rise the YouTuber, the idea came to him to use an electric skateboard covered by a carpet to look like a magic carpet. It took him eight months to put his plan together, and as anyone who saw him do it in person will tell you, it made them wonder if magic was real. <laughs> Lego Firewalk Stepping on a Lego is never fun unless you enjoy intense pain, but no one likes that, right? The first intentional Lego walk started to pop up on the internet about four years ago. In June of 2014, a Portland, Maine video store ran a promotion. Traverse the 12-foot-long Lego firewalk and get the Lego movie at half price. The promotion lasted only an hour and a few people dozen, including kids, did it, but Star Trek's George Takai posted a picture of the firewalk and the link to the store on his Facebook page. The firewalk went viral and within a few weeks, other stores and events across the country were hosting similar walks. Not long after Bull Moose's event, the store was contacted by a local library that was hosting a screening of the Lego movie in the park and they wanted to know if Sir Troy's could help them pull one off for the showing. The store constructed an 8-foot long, 2-foot wide board piled high with 40 pounds of Legos, mostly bricks and worth around $1,000. On April 21st, Russell Kaseva, with sweat beating on his brow, teeth gritted the whole way, walked an unbelievable 2,737 feet on a square circle of red 4x2 Lego bricks at Philly Brickfest in front of a cheering crowd and a Guinness World Records adjudicator. By the end, his feet were violently red, bleeding and swollen. On every brick, there were eight chances for him to hit a corner and his feet felt like they were on fire. A medic had to wrap them in bandages. Hmm. World's Biggest Treadmill Why would you need the world's biggest treadmill? Let's find out. Well, we might not, but we do get to see a person use it. This treadmill really seems unnecessary. Who needs one this big? Maybe if you had a large vehicle of sorts to test it. But this person is using it for exercise, which seems very overkill. We have perfectly good ground outside to run on. Why do we need a massive treadmill that takes up a double car garage? We can't even imagine when something like this breaks down, it would take a ton of money and work just to get it back to normal. This must be some special scientific treadmill. There's no way this is the proper use, right? It makes you wonder how much something like this costs as well. Way too many questions regarding this. Let's hope it can at least help us achieve world peace. What do you think the official use of this treadmill is for? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> Creepy Clown Hotel the Clown Motel was named America's Scariest Motel due to its clown theme and proximity to the old Tanopa Cemetery. Many people are horrified by the Clown Motel. Some of the murals in the rooms are sure to give guests nightmares. 
But don't worry, there are also happy clowns, mainly in the lobby. People from all over the world send clowns to the collection, catering to bikers, truckers, and other long-haul travelers who find themselves off the beaten path. The Clown Motel is the final port of call before yet another stretch of Nevada desert. It must be this location's oasis-like location that has kept the establishment in business for so long, as the eyes of the freaky clown figurines seem to stare. From the moment travelers enter the offices, they're greeted by a life-size clown figure sitting in a chair, cradling smaller figurines. In fact, the entire office is covered in shelves and bookcases full of clown dolls and statues. Just beyond the gate is a century-old miner's graveyard made up of a gaggle of wood and stone markers, the very idea of a haunted cemetery. There do not seem to be many odd stories, horror or otherwise, surrounding the motel. The history may be kept a secret as it could be because no one has made it out alive. <laughs> Futuristic Firefighting as new technology keeps coming, firefighting will get safer and safer as this is a hopeful sign of the future. A new type of extinguisher that uses sound waves to put out fires has been built by two engineering students from America. Both chemical and water-free, the invention provides a relatively non-destructive way of fire control which could help in fighting small fires in the house. Using low-frequency sound waves to put out flames, this experimental fire extinguisher is the work of George Mason University engineering seniors Viet Tran and Seth Robertson. They pump up the base to douse a blaze. The basic concept is that the sound waves are also pressured waves and they displace some of the oxygen as they travel through the air. Oxygen, we all recall from high school chemistry, fuels fire. At a certain frequency, the sound waves separate the oxygen from the fuel. The pressure wave is going back and forth, and that agitates where the air is. That specific area is enough to keep the fire from reigniting. They placed flaming rubbing alcohol next to a large subwoofer and found that it wasn't all about the bass. Musically speaking at least, music isn't good enough as it doesn't stay consistent, which is key. A complication may lie in the heat in larger fires. As the sonic extinguisher contains no coolant, it may, be able to, it may be unable to prevent big fires from reigniting after the sound is turned off. The duo's work could potentially be applied to robotics where the device would be attached to a drone to be used in a large forest fire or urban blaze, improving safety for firefighters, which is always a good thing. <laughs> Ultimate Bridge Crossing the incredible thrill-seeking mountain biker Aurelien Fontenoy cycled up and over the arch of a bridge in his hometown of Grenoble. The French mountain biker said he kept thinking that he would end up in the graveyard just over the bridge if he made one wrong move and said you need to be very in touch with your body and bike to successfully attempt such a trick. Aurelien was born in December of 1989 and he's a French mountain bike trial pilot. He began his discipline at the age of eight, then went on to win titles three times junior world champion, twice European junior champion, and three times vice senior world champion. This brave biker rode a bicycle through the narrow arches of a French bridge and had the risk of plunging into the river below. He doesn't use safety devices for stunts and safely reached the highest point, overcame fear, and freewheeled the other side. When he planned the ride, the cyclist filmed himself walking on the bridge and explained how some pedestrians called him crazy. He knew he was going to be crazy, he was there and already a few older people were looking at him like he wasn't human. He said at the top, it's the scariest. There are moments when he has to push the chain when he pedals and he really didn't want to break it. Ultimate bridge crossing seems like something only five people on earth could accomplish, maybe even less. This is something you don't see every day, that's for sure. <laughs> balloon World Cup You know that balloon game you play at birthday parties? The one where the balloon can't touch the floor? Well, now it's an official sport with its own World Cup. You've played that game before, right? The competition was organized by a Barcelona footballer and Spanish internet celebrity. The first Balloon World Cup was in Tarragona, Spain, when Peru's Francesco de la Cruz being crowned the very first Balloon World Champion. The game only has two rules. First, you can't hinder your opponent's movement or ability to hit the balloon. Second, you have to hit the balloon in a way that moves it upward instead of down. The massive success of the World Cup had amazing viewership as well. There's been no word on whether we'll see another balloon keep-up event in the future. The success of the first one may lead to more competitions. 
You might think just keeping the balloon from touching the floor would be simple. Wrong. You're also trying to stop your opponent from being able to reach the balloon as well. So there are many tactics involved. The small court on which this game is played contains a number of obstacles, such as living room furniture, a car, an arcade game, and for whatever reason, a gigantic pack of Mentos. Maybe instead of fireworks as an explosive intro, they can use the Coke and Mentos trick. We hope you enjoyed many of these unique things and that you experienced them for the first time. What'd you learn? What was the best moment on the list? Let us know in the comments. You can let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. You can also hit subscribe for more awesome Missing Files content. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Mm-hmm.